So uh, the first lecture, I'm going to show you how to install the software that we're going to need uh, throughout the semester. And you can go to the website here, uh, gog 312 uh, gshub.org, and then on the left side, software. So we're going to use Miniconda for doing the package management. Basically, install all the Python packages that you need. Okay. And the second one is the Visual Studio Code, where we use to write um, Python call. And the Git is for you to do version control, and also for you to get the course content from uh, GitHub. We don't have time to cover all these three, how to use that um, in today's lecture, but I'm going to show you more next time uh, in, on Thursday. The first one is the Miniconda. Uh, Miniconda is a package uh, management that allows you to install packages, creating environments. And it's very important because if you have ever used a desktop JS, for example, install uh, ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro on the computer, it only allows you to install one, right? If you need to have another version, you need to uninstall, you need to update. Uh, update. You cannot hit, have multiple versions, right? So Miniconda is different. It's like virtual environment allows you to create a lot of virtual Python environment that you can do a lot of things. Kind of like you can think about your computer as a, a building. Miniconda allows you to create virtual spaces. Virtual rooms allow you to do, uh, use for any purposes. And you can install things, you can rearrange the furniture, you can install packages. Once you are done, you can destroy it. It's not going to impact your outside. So everything is like virtual. So it's a uh, very important one. So you definitely want to create some uh, virtual environment when you're doing uh, some programming. So all you need to do is just go to the um, website. And then from here, you can select whatever your operating system and then just download it. For example, I'm on Windows. I'm going to click and then download this one to a computer. And so this one, you see, is only like 83 megabytes. And on Conda, probably it's over 500. I'm not quite sure. But once it's done, then you just double click. So most of the software installations should be pretty easy and straightforward. Um, I'm going to. Oops. Open my. Downloads directory. Okay, once it's done, just double click. And next, I agree. It's just me. In here, I would recommend use the default directory. So it's going to install under your username and then call Miniconda 3. If you have Anaconda, probably it's Anaconda 3 or something. And then just click next. So here, just accept all the default settings, install, that's it. And after that, you should have something coming up on your start menu, showing um, we, we in a second, I will show you. So this is the first one that you need to install, Miniconda, basically allows you to create, like I said, virtual environment that allows you to install packages into each virtual environment. And if you're beginners, most likely you only need one virtual environment, but it's still good because you don't want to you don't want to go to the Python website to download Python and then install Python directly to your computer um, because you can only have one version. And it's going to break your computer if you do something um, incorrectly. Miniconda allows you to do anything. It will not break it. You need to stop after you're done. So next, and then just uncheck all the stuff. And that's it. So the first one is done. You can go to the start menu. Uh, if you're using a lab computer, it's already on the lab computer. And then go to uh, all apps. Then scroll down, you should be able to find Miniconda 3. If you're using Anaconda, probably there's uh, Anaconda 3 or something uh, at the top. So here I can go to Miniconda. And you're going to have this three in here. Anaconda prompt and Anaconda PowerShell prompt. I think you can click this one. I'm not sure if mine works or not. Yeah, my set problem because I already messed up last time. So you see, it opens up and then it disappears. There's something wrong, but it doesn't matter. Um, I, I can still use it. But you can open it from your laptop or from the lab computer. Again, uh, come here, Miniconda. So if it is opened it up, then you can, uh, from here, you can uh, ping that one to the taskbar uh, if you want to. I can also open this one, right click, open the terminal. I think usually I will use it from here. Uh, open the terminal. And then from here, you can type conda. You see, it's going to say base. 
we cover more uh, uses next time by UEC from here, right? So I can type Conda. So if you open your terminal or you open the uh, Anaconda prompt and then just type Conda, hit enter. If you see something like this, then it means you're all good, okay? If it doesn't, that means something is missing. So um, let me know. I can help you. Again, going to any issues, post it on the GitHub discussion. Take the screenshot, upload it, and say, that, okay, I, I'm, I'm having this issue, and blah, blah. Again, you'll be showing it one more time here. If you go to uh, GitHub repository, okay, discussions. So if you run into any issues, technical issues, create a new discussion, write the description, uh, see the Q&A, write description, and then uh, provide some screenshots, and I can help you do the debugging. Okay? So this is the first one, uh, uh, Miniconda. Second one, Visual Studio Code. There are other options, um, called PyCharm and um, Spider. There are a couple more options, but Visual Studio Code is the most popular one. So again, just open the new uh, the, the link in the new tab, and then download. Uh, if you're using Mac or uh, Linux, you go to the website, it should automatically uh, detect your operating system. And then, just click the link, download, take a couple seconds, then we can, we can do the installation. So, um, almost done. Okay. So you see, it's only 98 uh, megabytes, so it's a pretty small package, but it's very powerful. You can install a lot of um, extensions, allow you to extend the functionality. So this is just the core functionality. Okay, and then say, I accept. And you can use the default settings. Um, only thing here is, I want you maybe to check is this one. Open, add, open with call, actions to Windows Explorer. So in this way, you can right click on the file explorer and then you can open a folder or something like that. So it's not a big deal. Uh, if you don't want to track that, that's fine as well. So for me, I will just check these two options. And then next, install. Okay, almost there. So this one is uh, from um, Microsoft, okay? But it's open source, anyone can contribute. Very popular. There's also another one called Visual Studio. It's different from this one, okay? Visual Studio is like um, a pay version. And it used to be very popular. And it's usually for doing like .NET, VB.NET or c -Sharp or other languages. But this one is like, you can do it for any languages. And then after that you can say, Launch Visual Studio Call and just open it up. I'm going to see this interface. Then from there, we can create new project. We can open a new directory. We don't have time to show you right now. We do it in the next uh, lecture. But one thing I want to recommend is lower left corner here. There's a button, and then you click. You can log into your GitHub account. Okay, we click that, and then you're going to log in, and then you go pop up your uh, browser, and then you can log into your GitHub. So this one's you can synchronize the extension. So if you install any extensions, uh, next time you open another computer, it will automatically synchronize. Again, we cover more uh, in the next lecture. So this is the second one. Last one is Git. So I'm going to come to here, uh, go to the Git website, and then just click Download. Download for Windows. And so you want to select uh, the 64-bit. When you're using Mac, uh, download the one for the Mac um, operating system. And then, here, yeah, open it. Okay, so next, next, yes, anyway, and then next, next. So the only thing you want to change is this one. Because we already installed Visual Studio Code, we can use like this Visual Studio Code as Geek's uh, default editor. And um, just next. Next, everything. I don't know how, why they make so many options. And that's it. So once this is done, then we have Git. Um, and we're going to show you how to configure Git uh, in the next lecture. But pretty much these are the three 
more software tools that we're going to use and make sure you install them on your computer then we can start having fun doing coding um, Thursday okay so that's all for today any questions if not I'll see you on uh, Thursday